Hello everybody, I'm Nick and with Donner Co3 finally released, we got Blazor server side finally officially in GA. Blazor client side is still in preview and it will be until May of the 2020, but we can actually take a look into the structure of Blazor projects and then we can discuss about server side and client side and what's better, what's worse, what you should choose, what you should stay away of, and whether it's the right time to jump into this Blazor train. I'm going to recap a few things, primarily what Blazor is and then what Blazor components are, and then I'm going to look into the two different types of a Blazor application that is server-side and client-side, weight the pros and cons, and then I'm going to make some conclusions based on those pros and cons, whether you should use client-side or server-side or maybe something else. So let's dive into it. So what is Blazor? Blazor is a single-page web application framework like React or Angular built on .NET. It mostly eliminates the need for a JavaScript framework or any JavaScript at all because it enables developers to use their existing c -sharp knowledge and write c -sharp on the web. This is done using WebAssembly on the client side and SignalR connection to a web server on the server side. Before we look into the two technologies in depth, I need to explain what their building blocks are. We're using something called Razor Components. Razor Components are self-contained chunks of UI. This can be a form, a dialogue, or even a page. It includes the HTML and the processing logic necessary to inject data and respond to UI events like button clicks or mouse hovers, etc. They're very flexible and lightweight, and their true power comes from their ability to be nested, reused, and shared among many projects. There are currently many providers as well, like Telerico, DevExpress, that can actually provide you with pre-made Razor component that you can use in your application right now. There's also many projects on GitHub that do the exact same thing by individual contributors. These components can also be integrated into Razor pages and regular MVC applications. Every time there's an interaction or a state change that affects those components, a UI diff is calculated. This diff contains all the changes that the DOM needs to undergo. Imagine like a version control diff or patch where you see what needs to be removed and what needs to be added for the changes to reflect the new state. Now let's take a look at the services one after the other. And I'm going to start with client side because I think it's easier to explain. Client side Blazor is running using a technology called WebAssembly. WebAssembly is a binary instruction format of a stack-based virtual machine. A more simplified way to think of WebAssembly is to imagine it as a way to run high-level programming languages on the web, providing an experience that until now only JS was able to give. It is also promised to run close to native speed, but whether it achieves it or not is debatable. It is supported by all four major browser engines, Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Safari, and definitely not rebranding in Microsoft Edge. As we can see in this image, we have a browser, the UI thread, and within this UI thread, our Blazor application code is running. How do we achieve that? Upon the first page load, client-side Blazor will automatically download all the necessary code for all the .NET WebAssembly related stuff to run. Then it will simply download all the DLLs of our application and then just run it. This means that the first load of a website can be quite slow, but it gets better and better as we're making use of the internal cache and subsequent loads. Let's take a look on how we can create a client-side Blazor application. First, we need to install the preview Blazor templates. Uh, I have copied it over from the website. I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to check this link out. But this is what we need to run, essentially. I'm going to click Enter, install the template. And now with the template installed, let me just clear. And what I need to do is say .NET new Blazor wasm, and then a name. And I'm going to say Web Assembly Blazor and I'm going to click, and this will create my project. And then if I do CD WebAssembly Blazor, I can do .NET run, and this will now run my WebAssembly client-side application, and I'll be able to access it on the web. So let's take a look and see what happens. So as you can see, our application is now running. This is a Blazor client-side project, and I can use the counter thing and fetch data. You see the data being fetched, and if I click inspect element and I go into the console, I want to show you a few things. As you can see, there's a few things related to Blazor and WebAssembly being downloaded. First, we're downloading blazor.webassembly.js. We're also downloading json.boot.json, mono.js, mono.webassembly, and then we're downloading our applications DLL and all the dependencies DLL. And these are, if I go to preview, you'll see this is actually the compiled code of the project. You can actually just double click on this and download it, and you could just decompile it and see what's in there. And this can be a turn-off for many people. You don't want your code to be exposed, but for this to run, we need to do that. You also have a bunch of other DLLs 
But what's very interesting is the size of all those things. We just downloaded 5.4 megabytes of resources to run this page load. This can be quite a lot, and I understand your concerns if you're seeing this for the first time. But with caching and CDNs being involved, this can actually be trimmed down to a lot less, so don't worry about it. All you need to worry about is your application's code being on the client and you need to be very careful with what you put in there. But other than that, it just works like a charm, even in preview. Now let's see the pros of running a Blazor client-side WebAssembly project. Well, first, there is no need for a server-side dependency. If your application doesn't depend on some server for its data, you can just give that to the client, offload it to the client, and it will just run on the client. And this is also very great because you just primarily utilizing the client's resources. You don't need to care about your application running on the server and scaling. There's also no need for JS. Even though there is interoperability, if you really, really need it, you don't have to use it, which is great. The final pro, which I think is very, very good, is it supports offline scenarios. and It can be deployed as a static site. It knows it's self-contained. It knows how to download everything it needs to run, which is amazing. Now, let's see a few of the cons. The download size, as you saw, is quite big, and the bigger your application, the bigger the download size. It also requires WebAssembly, which not every browser supports it, like IE11 can't actually run it. On top of that, the .NET runtime that you're getting as part of the WebAssembly version is less mature than what you have on the server. You cannot use .NET Core or any of that, it's just .NET standard. Debugging is also a pain. It's really, really hard to debug in the client-side version of Blazor. As of today, that might change in the future, but as of today, it's really, really hard. It's also still in preview and it can't be used in production, or I wouldn't recommend you use it in production yet, but in May of 2020, it will be out of preview and onto GA. The last con is that all your DLLs will be downloaded to the client. So anything in that WebAssembly version of your application will be downloaded on the client. I understand IP concerns and code concerns, Unless you potentially obfuscate the code that, you know, even if you obfuscate it, you're not guaranteed that nobody is able to reverse engineer it. Everything you put in there, you should consider like you just, there's nothing confidential in there. Because people can just take them, open them up and see what's in there. So you don't want to have connection strings or anything confidential. All that should be on your server side, if you have one. Now let's take a look on server side Blazor. This is a Blazor that got released with .NET Core 3. It has the same component structure as the client side version, but it works quite differently. Instead of downloading everything on the client and running on WebAssembly, the server side will use an ASP.NET Core application running on the server and then open a real-time SignalR connection from the browser to that server. All the processing of the component and the state will happen on the server and the server will only send diffs back to the client to update the DOM when the state has changed. All the user interaction will also go to the server via this single real-time connection. That means that every mouse hover, every button click or any other interaction that the user is doing will require a network hop via signal R. This also means that the code never leaves your server. This in result allows you to get more creative and permissive with the services you inject into your components. You can do things like injecting a service that talks straight to the database to retrieve some objects. You can do that in server side. You can't do this on client side because you're leaking your database connectivity and you don't want to do that. You have to have an API which your client-side application is talking to, and then your API is talking to the database. Let's go ahead and see how we can create a Blazor server-side app. Assuming you have Donor Core 3 installed, you can do .NET new Blazor server, and let's give it a name, let's say server Blazor. And this will create our server-side Blazor application. And now I can do cd server Blazor and I can do .NET run. So our Blazor application server side is running now, so I'm gonna go ahead and open the website. And as you can see here, it looks like it's exactly the same thing, but if I refresh, see how much faster this loads. Before we had a loading thingy here and it was downloading some stuff, now it's instant, you don't have to wait. And it's the exact same behavior, there's nothing fancy in this application, but this is coming from a server, this is coming through a real-time connection. This is not happening on the client. Signal R takes care of this. If I open again developer tools, you can see that if I refresh this, there's barely anything being downloaded. It's 400 kilobytes that's being downloaded and the loading is significantly faster. If I click again, you'll see that there's no traffic going back and forth because here you can see the handshake of our Blazor connection using Signal R that does all the traffic back and forth. This is great and it has many advantages. Let's see what the pros are. First, there is, again, no need for JS, even though there is the same interoperability, 
even though it works slightly different, but again, same component structure, you don't need JS. You can have it if you want it, but you don't need it. There's also a smaller download size and faster loading time as you saw. On top of that, you can use .NET Core's mature APIs because everything is running on a .NET Core application. It's not running on the client anymore in Mono and WebAssembly. Debugging also works like a charm because it's just like any other website as far as the good debugger is concerned. You also don't need a WebAssembly enabled browser. It can run anywhere as long as this anywhere supports WebSockets, which pretty much is everywhere. And last but not least, your code does not leave the server. Only the DOM diffs do. This different approach, however, is coming with a few cons as well, and let's look into them. First, as the name implies, you need the server side for the application to work. You can not just offload all the work to the client. On top of that, there is no offline support. The moment the server goes down or the moment the connectivity with SignalR is lost, the user is unable to make any action on the website because the SignalR real-time connection is needed. Blazor server side will try to reconnect to the same server, but it's not a nice user experience to see those loading screens and say reconnect every time the connectivity is lost. This also means that there is higher latency due to the need for every interaction to go through a network hop. If your application is not geo-replicated to as many regions as possible, then the user experience can be quite bad because you can press a button and you won't see the action of this button or of this mouse hover until the hop is completed. And if you live, let's say, in India and the server is hosted in the US, this can be quite bad because this is the speed of light. It can get as fast as the speed of light, not faster. Which leads to my last concern with Blazor server side, and that is maintenance and scalability. It can be very, very challenging, and I want to elaborate on this. Let's say you open a tab of a Blazor server side application. You open a SignalR connection to the server. Now, Let's say you open three more or four more. You just opened four connections from that single PC to your server. Connections that you have to manage. Now, scale that up to a hundred or a thousand or a hundred thousand users. You don't only need to manage the traffic that you would normally manage on a website, but you also need to manage those real-time connections. This can make scaling out very, very challenging. Scaling out is the process of running many versions of the same application and then hiding them behind the load balancer and the load balancer or traffic manager chooses where to send the traffic based on the load. This wouldn't normally be challenging, but because server-side Blazor is keeping the state of the user in memory on the server, imagine that the user is disconnected and then reconnected through a different server via the traffic manager. You just lost all that state and the user is confused, like, what's happening here? Where did my stuff go? You can get around this by using the Azure SignalR service because it will use the stickiness built in the service and know where to reroute the traffic. But in non-Azure based deployments, you have to rely on the traffic manager of your choice to deal with this issue and you have to do the extra configuration. This can be frustrating and challenging and it is my biggest personal concern. So what should you choose? Okay, Should you dive into server side now? Should you wait until client side or should you not use Blazor at all? Let's summarize everything we know. Like with pretty much everything in software engineering, it depends. But I'll give you my honest opinion based on how the market looks right now. The market always changes and in six months it will look completely different, but as of today, this is what I got. Blazor, server-side or client-side, is a really nice programming model. It allows c -sharp developers like me and you that don't want to get into JS to achieve similar results without learning a new programming language. However, I don't really think that the server-side version of Blazor will take the world by storm. To me, it feels more like here is this new thing we've been working on and here is this lesser version of what's coming later Get familiar with the model and later you can jump in the real thing. My biggest concern for saying that is this SignalR connection that needs to be there. Having a SignalR connection for every interaction and DOM chains to go through seems like a really tough thing to do when you're scaling your application. The only use that I would make currently of server-side Blazor is to either create company internal websites very quickly and easily because I don't have to worry about scaling them or use Electron with Electron.net to wrap around the server-side Blazor application and create amazing cross-platform desktop apps. Scaling this scenario isn't really the problem because you only have one consumer and the latency concerns go away because the server and the client are in the same network. Blazor client side, on the other hand, is what I would consider to be the real deal. It's what Steve Sanderson wanted to do in the first place with Blazor and is what I think can really work and shake up things. No single connection to worry about, no scalability concerns, just pure .NET c -sharp awesomeness. I will be personally diving into server-side Blazor and I will also start a series on it because I think it's worth exploring and it's worth learning the component model. But I can't hide that I can't wait until May 2020 when WebAssembly Blazor is coming out. So what do you think about Blazor server-side and client-side? 
Leave your comments down below. That's all I had for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well to be notified of new videos. Support me on GitHub if that's something you want to do and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.